How's everybody doing this morning? Have you been blessed so far? Come on, come on. Let's put our hands together for Jesus in this place. You are in a place where we not only when we do not only talk about God, but we demonstrate his power. And this is why we do such a testimony it's for us to be convinced that the God that we read off the pages of the Bible is the God that is the same yesterday, today and forever. And there is nothing to God that is impossible. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing in your life, God is still the same. He's still in the business of setting people free, healing people, delivering people. And he's still in the, same, in the business of blessing people in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say amen? amen. Today I want to quickly, briefly talk to you on the subject uh, that's that I call it from worry to worship and um, we're going to take a look at it in the scripture in the Bible and we're going to look what the Bible says about worrying and how to handle stress and worry in our life as um, as uh, Dwayne shared uh, his testimony is that one uh, one of the reasons why people revert to smoking to drinking one of the reasons why people revert to um, drugs and other means other substances is because life overwhelms them and they go to the places to substances to relieve their stress relieve their pain relieve their worry so that they can get some relief to their life and um, today we're going to look from the bible from the scripture what god says about worries and how should we handle the worries and how can we help ourselves to be less worried and more trust in God and so if you can open to the scripture Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 to 33 as you open I'm going to kind of give you a couple statistics so that you begin to understand the scope of the problem that the worry produces or what it actually causes statistically says that uh, statistics says that 43 of all adults suffer for from adverse health effects from stress 75 to 90 of all doctor visits are for stress related elements and complaints can you believe that 75 percent of 75 to 90 percent of all doctor visits in the united states are somehow related with stress stress can play a part in pro, uh, part in problems such as headache high blood pressure heart problem diabetes skin disease asthma arthritis depression anxiety and can lead to suicide and anxiety disorder are the most common mental illness in the united states affects about 18 percent of population current estimate by by this number is much higher approximately 30 percent 30 percent of people don't seek help for this issue women uh, women are twice as likely to be affected as men and typically it begins around age seven for girls and 13 for boys boys are a little bit slower to catch up on life so but it begins to affect kids from the age of seven for girls and age of 13 and uh, sure enough as big of an issue it is God didn't leave it out of the Bible and he addressed that issue and he left instructions for us how to properly deal with worry and stress in our life and how to overcome it in Jesus mighty name do you want to learn uh, this morning church yes. amen amen um First of all, worry in a sense is not a bad thing. Worry is a mechanism that God has placed in our human mind, in our human nature for us to uh, protect ourselves and for us to solve problems and plan for the future. So God designed us this way to function that you know when some something comes up our mind automatically kicks in into worry mode and begins to prepare a solution for us or begins to plan out solution and begins to plan for our future so in a sense just like for example not all fear is bad there's fear that is overwhelming and leads to to stress anxiety there's fear that leads to um bad things but there's fear that is a common sense fear for example like don't jump from a third story building because you're going to break your legs or you can damage yourself there's fear of heights there's there's a good fear same as for worries there is a there is a common worry that we all go through that our mind operates in such a way to prepare solution to work out a solution and plan for the future but there's worries that we then we begin to worry and begin to stress 
and begin to worry about things that we can't control and things that we can't change and this is the worry that is not healthy worry that that when we begin to worry and we begin to stress about things that we can't control or we can't change when let's go let's go read the scripture that uh we are gonna lay as a foundation Matthew chapter 6 verse 31 to 33 so don't worry about these things saying what you will eat what we will drink what we will wear these things dominate the thoughts of unbeliever but your heavenly father already knows all your needs seek the kingdom of God above all else live righteously and he will give everything that you need I want you to underline I want you to see this and I'm reading from NLT version and in NLT version it says this these things dominate the thoughts of unbeliever these things that dominate so the worry about everyday thing the worry about every single detail the worry of what I'm gonna uh, do where I'm gonna make the money worrying about the family and the kids worrying about the job worrying about a business or what's gonna come next where I'm gonna get the next contract these things Jesus says that these things dominate the unbelievers mind see whatever dominates your mind controls your life if worry constantly dominate your life then there is no room for faith and without faith we can't please God without faith God can't do anything in our lives and so we left to our own strength see when you begin to worry what you're doing is you play in God and you assume a position of God in your life not trusting that he will provide for everything that he said he will provide do you know interesting fact and it comes actually from the scripture out of all the creation plant kingdom animal kingdom out of all the creation humans are the only one that don't trust God because in Matthew chapter uh, 6 or from the same chapter just, just that, that we just read from earlier uh, Jesus says that look at the lilies of the valley do they worry how they're gonna dress but yet they dress better than Solomon and all his wealth he says look at the birds and the animals do they worry about do they worry about what they're gonna eat the next day he says no because it will be provided for them so what Jesus is saying is that out of all of his creation humans are the only one that actually worry about God doing what he said he's gonna do but God is the only person that will do what he said he will do and never fail we can doubt ourselves we can doubt even our parents we can doubt uh, we can doubt our children we can doubt our best friends we can doubt even our spouses but there is one person that will never fail there's one person that will always come through and will do what he says he will do is God we can trust him he is a creator he is a father amen church turn to your neighbor say don't worry Turn to your aunt neighbor and say trust God. When you begin to worry, worry stops your creativity. Scientists did a study and they came up with a project and they took a classroom of people and divided the classroom into two groups. One group had the same task but they put a deadline on them. They said you have to finish in a certain amount of hours. And there was some kind of creative task. And then they took another group and they said here's the same task two groups are separate both of them didn't know about each other and their, ta their own tasks he said here's the same task but there is no deadline take as much time as you want do whatever you need to do to accomplish this task what they found is the group that had a deadline were less creative less motivated that group did not meet the deadline and the group that did not have a stress and worry about the deadline was more creative finished tasks finished the task and finished it within a three hours even though they, did, they didn't have that uh, the time limit and they accomplished the task much more creative much better and they felt better about themselves first in the first group felt bad about themselves from this example we see that when you are worried when you are stressed when you are anxious it stops the flow of creativity it stops the motivation it deters your focus 
and you're not able to be as efficient as effective as you could be when you relay your worry and your stress to God and you're free to do what God has called you to do. Amen church? The Occupation Safety and Health Administration in the United States declares the stress ha hazard of workplace. Stress costs American industry more than 300 billion dollars annually because people miss work, people are stressed at jobs so they can't perform as good as they can or as they, uh, to the full potential. Stress in America causes 300 billion dollars every year in our work environment and a work industry. It causes 42 billion dollars a year in medical bills. So total it comes up to about 350 billion dollars a year that the worry, stress and anxiety cause to people life. Someone said that worry is like a rocking chair. It's always in motion but it gets you nowhere. You're always thinking. You always, you always, you know, worry is Worry what it does is it locks you in a never-ending circle or oh, what ifs, what if this, what if that, what if doesn't come through, what if this happens, what if I'm not, if I'm, a, um, if, what if I'm gonna run short on money, what if this, if you get locked in in a circle of what if and it's a never-ending circle and a lot of times we worry about things that never actually happened. Somebody said about 90% of the things that we worry about actually never come to pass. We worry about what, if, what I'm going to do when my child's going to grow up. What if I'm not going to have money to put them through college? It's okay. You've got college loans and you survived. You know, what if I'm not be able to do this or that? What if I'm not be able to provide for my family? And a lot of times we get locked up in this never-ending circle what ifs. While 90% of those things never actually come to pass. And the other 10, most of the time you don't have no control of them. So why even worry in the first place? I want to tell you another point is that behind your worries, behind stress, behind anxiety, there is a demonic influence. Worry leaves, leads to anxiety. Anxiety eventually leads to depression and depression leads to suicide. So when we don't control our worries when we don't control what we think about what we meditate on when we don't guard our mind we can quickly find ourselves being overly anxious and then will lead to depression and depression is the leading cause of suicide you know sometimes people think like what I could never do this I could never take my own life I could never get to that stage but people never get to that stage without first being worried and when the worry becomes unchecked it leads to anxiety and eventually leads to devastating uh, consequences there's only one entity and one person that is that is responsible for such a thing and it's Satan and demons because Bible says he came to kill steal and destroy Demo there is a demonic influence behind excessive worries and anxiety and if we are not careful and we don't if we don't manage our mind if we don't keep track of our thoughts we can come under that influence and he can, and he, and he can lead us to de devastating consequences worry opens a gateway for a demonic influence another statistic says that Stress and anxiety is responsible for over 40% of sicknesses today. And the Bible says in Proverbs 12, 25, an anxious heart weighs down a man. So you have to learn. You have to come to the place. You have to understand how to deal with stress in your life. You have to understand how to deal with worries in your life so that you don't fall prey to Satan. You don't fall prey to demons. You don't fall prey to demonic influence in order to do that you have to learn how to discern your thoughts and the source of your thoughts I want to tell you quickly three things that help me to discern if the thoughts that I'm thinking that come what's the source of the thoughts first of all is you produce your thoughts your subconscious you the one source of your thoughts comes from you 
And these are the thoughts that, like I already mentioned in the beginning, is that normal worries, the things that your mind is trying to figure out, come up with a solution and, and, and resolve and resolve a problem and plan for the future. God never calls us. When he said, don't worry about tomorrow, don't worry about what you're going to eat and don't worry about all these things. God never meant for us to be careless about it. He never meant for us not to take care of our family, take care of our finances and things of these, things of this sort. So there is that normal worry in the sense of whether that we are planning and taking care of ourselves, our future and finances. So that's a normal, normal part. The uh, point number two or source number two the, the influence that the, the source of our worries that can come from demons, demonic influence. These are the worries that become overwhelming, that come above the average worry that we have to solve issues and plan for future, prepare ourselves. These, when we begin to obsessively worry about the things that we can't change and the things that we can't control. It's those nagging thoughts that continuously come and repeat themselves over and over and over again. You have to at that, moment, at that point recognize if it's just you or now it's beyond you, it's a demonic influence. Or these are demonic voices. And a third source of our thoughts is the Holy Spirit. These are the positive thoughts. These are the thoughts of hope. These are the thoughts of future. These are the thoughts of faith. These are, these are good, good, kinds of, good kind of thoughts. And so we need to quickly realize and understand where the source of our thoughts is. And if we notice that our worry, our stress, our anxiety is becoming overly the average and normal things that we need to worry about. We begin to worry about things that we don't need to worry about, things that we can change or control. We need to quickly stop ourselves and release our stress and worries to God. Amen. Worry accomplishes absolutely nothing if you can't fix the problem then don't worry about it if you can fix it then stop slacking and fix it okay worry does not accomplish obsessive worry over the top worry doesn't accomplish anything but steals your time steals your emotional energy steals your focus and steals your creativity you have to constantly check yourself that you don't find yourself in an area of excessive worrying if you can't fix it, fix it immediately. Don't drag it so that you don't worry, you don't, you don't occupy your mind. If you can't fix it, leave it be. Leave it in God's hands. Amen, church? Are we ready to learn how we're going to deal with worries now? Okay. I want you to um, turn to scripture. Philippians. Where's my scripture? Philippians chapter 4. Oh, there you go. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Let's read together. Don't worry about anything. Instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Keep that, keep that verse open and you're just going to underline and write some notes as we're going to break this verse down. First and foremost, we have to realize that God cares about us. You have to understand that God cares about us. You know what's the difference between a wolf and a dog? Wolf doesn't have a master. So he has to take care of himself and provide for himself. A dog, he has a master, therefore he does not worry about where his food is going to come from, where his water is going to come from. That's why a dog is so happy to see his master. He wiggles his tail and those dogs lovers, you better say amen. Okay. And, um, and sometimes I wonder if Christians, we're so bitter about life and so, and so on the edge all the time and so cranky. Maybe because we took on too much on ourselves. Jesus said, come to me, all you heavy laden and with burdens. And let's exchange the burdens. And I will give you rest and peace. I'm paraphrasing the scripture. What he's saying is that a lot of us, we carry too much load. We carry the stress, the worries about the family, about the future, about finances, about business. We, we worry about our kids, where they're going to go, what they're doing, how they're behaving. We take on things that 
are not meant for us to carry and Jesus is inviting us today and say listen I am here those that weight that you're carrying belongs to me come to me we have to realize that we have God who cares in first Peter chapter uh, first Peter chapter 5 verse 6 says this cast all cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares when Jesus came and uh, disciples came to him and said teach us how to pray here's the first thing that Jesus told his disciples how to address God he says our father who is in heaven you have a father one of the jobs one of the tasks of the father is to provide one of the tasks of the father is to care one of the tasks of the father is to take care of their children by ref by by referring to him as a father we put ourselves in a position as children as children they trust their parents they they throw themselves at, the, at their support and their at their care you know scientists um, did a study hooked up all the brain scans and all the things that we have nowadays to uh, to measure the brain waves and activity and they took uh, they took children and they took an adults and they measured and they and they said that when a person receives an, a loving embrace in when a, uh, receives an embrace for a person that cares and loves for them in a ch children's case it's parents uh, and an adults cares it's just somebody who cares and loves them stress goes down significantly so that's why Jesus says that in order to enter the kingdom of God you have to be like a child you have to come to the father and you have to throw him throw yourself at his embrace you have to allow himself to care for you to love on you to to take care of you so that those things that you stressed out those things that you worried about that he can take your burden off number two you have to pray about everything tell God your needs tell God about what's bothering you in Psalm 55 verse 22 says cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never permit the righteous to be moved you have to talk to God about your needs you have to talk to God about your problems you have to bring it to God and lay it down because he cares because he wants to hear from you he wants to relieve you of the things that are burdening you things that you are struggling with you know sometimes when you come in prayer and you can't pray and things are weighing you down don't go further in prayer just go back just go to God and, and pour out your heart, uh, heart before him find that peace find that assurance from him and then move for, uh, further in prayer then begin to pray for different things begin to begin to worship him relieve your burdens with God this is why we have morning prayers every morning prayer uh, the doors open at five o'clock and uh, doors open for five till ten or even later there's a place here that you can come you can spend time with God you can you can spend time with him uh, and relieve your burdens in his in his presence or you do it at home but this is why you need daily fellowship and daily communication with God amen church amen. and number three worship him as though as he already done it and uh, if you go, go go back to the scripture Philippians chapter 4 it says this thank thank him for all that he has done first I want you to mention the word thank him uh, worship is an expression of our thanksgiving and another word I want you to notice for what he is already done we have to come to the place where we don't only ask him for things but we begin to thank God for what he has already done when we already in advance began thanking him that he is already accomplished and completed in our lives and next thing I want you to, under, to see what happens when you begin to do these three things God doesn't says that he will fix our situation immediately he doesn't say that our life will change right on the spot. He doesn't say that our kids will start behaving properly. He's not saying that your bank account is going to multiply immediately. He's not saying that you're going to find a job right at that moment. What he's saying is that when you give me your worries, I will give you my peace. 
when you give me your stress when you give me your anxiety no the things might not change immediately but you will have peace Jesus was found in the middle of the ocean waves are raging things are things are crazy disciples are, are in dismay disciples are stressing disciples are trying to survive and Jesus peacefully Bible says sleeping in the boat finally they couldn't take any longer they wake up Jesus and said Jesus we are dying I can only imagine that their 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 stress their anxiety and you know like pleading with Jesus Jesus are, are you okay why are you sleeping while we are pretty much dying here but Jesus woke up rebuked them because of lack of faith and rebuked the storm and the storm came down if you can't sleep through your storm you will never be able to conquer it you will never be able to command it to be silent if you don't have peace in your heart you will never be able to command that that problem to be resolved you will never be able to command that that that, that situation that you're going through to be silenced in Jesus mighty name God works first by giving us peace and then he works in producing that peace that that peace will begin to work in our life to produce the results in Jesus mighty name I remember um uh about two years back and uh, where well, I went on some prayer and fasting and I had a list of 10 things that I was praying for and believing for and asking God for and uh, one of the things that I was praying and believing God was was to um to have my own to to have my own house you know we were been married in that by that time we were been married six years we still lived in apartments going from one apartment to another apartment and I was it was one of those things you know it was time for us to get our own uh, home uh, our own house and um, due to many different situations different circumstances that happened and things that uh, occurred we were not able to get uh, home to buy the house at that moment in our lives and I remember it was just one of those things that God put in my heart to pray and I'd start praying about it because you know you're just kind of starting to worry about you know we married for six years now it's time but we just can't seem to get to the place we tried multiple times getting um buying a house when we were about a year or two married by one time tried buying a fourplex it didn't work out and another time we're trying to buy a duplex it didn't work out so uh over the years we tried but it wasn't working and so come to the place where it was kind of burdening in my heart I wanted to have a house and so as I begin to pray and fast about uh, one of these things about and maybe on about seven day or eight day of prayer and fasting I felt this overwhelming peace overwhelming confidence in my heart that this issue is already resolved that I begin to see that we already have the house I begin to see how we were building that house and um, and the whole thing and I don't know how to even explain or describe but I got this overwhelming confidence and peace that we're gonna have we're gonna have the house you know at that moment we had no opportunities and no nothing that would immediately show that we could get that house but I already had that confidence and that peace in my in my heart now two years later forward into now I still don't have the house I still don't have the place uh, uh, to call our own to live in even though by hopefully by the end of the year things are moving forward God blessed us with the project that things are moving forward that by the end of the year we're going to start building our own house and things will things will work out but what happened first was that peace and confidence that God gave me in my heart to know that everything worked out even though there was no money even though there was no way of even getting a loan at that time but God worked things out in my life he put he put a project on my path that I was able to take on the project finally kind of start rolling start going things started putting together the finances started putting together everything that started putting together and today I want to say that we're in a process of building a blueprint making a blueprint and preparing to build our house within the next five or six months but this is how God works in our lives he begins to give us peace he begins to give us confidence he begins to take that worry from us take that anxiety that stress that comes with everyday life and he gives us peace that Bible says begins to guard our mind and I want to tell you throughout these two years many times where I came to a place where this project came to a halt a lot of money I needed to to raise to get this project a lot of a lot of things that kind of stalled and and you know my mind automatically kicked into worry what if I won't be able to raise enough money what if I won't be able to make it what if I you know this project is going to get set back again what if once again I'm going to try to get a house and it's not going to work out like other times 
but I came back to that back to that ba back to that time and that place where God gave me the peace and that peace guarded my mind from every distraction and every worry that would come into my head I want to tell you exchange today your stress exchange your worry you will see that your health will improve you'll see your focus will improve exchange the stress and worry that you're carrying you will you will feel better about yourself you'll begin to perform better at work you'll begin to perform better at business God will begin to give you creative ideas how to improve your business your workplace you will become a benefit to your workplace when you don't stress and you don't worry your health will improve Jesus says that you are blessed the Bible says that you are blessed with all the heavenly blessings all things work together for good for those who love him you have no room for stress you have no room for worry you have no room to even wonder because God says if you put your trust in me if you take your worries anxieties if you take your uncertainty things that bug you things that really get to you if you give it to me I will take care of it and everything will be okay when Jesus was going to the cross they put a crown of thorns on his head and I believe one of the reasons why Jesus had to wear a crown of thorns and those big needles of the thorns that was piercing his his head going deep into his head is because he wanted to take those piercing thoughts those anxieties those worries that weigh you down that stress you down that, that that bug your mind that boggle your mind he took it on the cross so you'll have no room for for worry so you have no room for stress and anxiety in your life Jesus took it all on the cross and he took your worry and stress so that you don't have to today be bounded by it that you don't have to be slave to it so that you don't have to ruin your health your relationships your emotions because of it in your life God is calling you to a worry-free life. God is calling you to a stress-free life in Jesus mighty name. I like saying uh, in pastors uh, in prophets Bushiri's church they have these t-shirts and I think we should get them too. In our family we don't stress we relax and I think I think that should be our one of the things one of the motto that you should live by. In God's family there's no room for stress. In, in his family we don't stress we relax in the precious arms of the Holy Spirit amen amen put your hands together for Jesus Christ